Today we're going to be taking a look at this, the CUAV Nora Autopilot. Now this is a new flight controller or autopilot from CUAV based on their X7 series. Now in this video I'm going to give you guys an overview of the Nora, talk about its features, its specifications and what makes it different from some of the other autopilots. We're then going to take a look at installing Ardropilot on the unit and then I'm going to start actually building it into an aircraft which is my Bixler 2 and then in a second video I'll actually be taking it for a test flight and taking you guys through that as well however today though we're going to take a look at the autopilot itself in a bit more detail now just before i do that if you find this video interesting please do consider hitting that subscribe button if you're interested there are links to various things in the description of this video as well if you'd like to support the channel i also do a live stream on a sunday night on my dedicated live streaming channel at 10 p.m uk 5 p.m eastern and there's a link to that in the description of this one as well anyway let's Let's get on with it and take a closer look at this new autopilot. The Nora is one of the latest autopilot or flight controllers from CUAV and it is based on their X7 series. Taking a closer look at the autopilot itself, you can see that the Nora is a rectangular all-in-one unit. It has the STM32H743 SOC, which allows it to run up to 480 megs. It has built-in triple redundant IMU sensors using the ICM20689, the ICM20649, and the BMI088. It has a single built-in compass using the RM3100. It has dual built-in barrow sensors, both of which are the MS5611s. It has 14 PWM ports, supports SBUS, CPPM and DSM receivers, dual GPS port, both analog and CAM-based power module support. It weighs just 50 grams and its size is 46 by 64 by 22 millimeters. Now, unlike the X7 and the X5 series, this is a square autopilot and it is not of that cube modular design that we have seen from CUAV that look very similar to other models from other manufacturers. Connectivity wise, this autopilot has close to everything you will ever need. It has a dedicated GPS port, four UART ports, four I2C bus ports, two CAN bus ports, two power ports, two analog digital inputs, two USB B port options as well as an analog PWM RSSI input port as well. As mentioned we have 14 PWM ports, we then also have an SD card for our data login and a USB-C port for our main computer connectivity for uploading firmware. Also located on the autopilot is a number of LEDs, one on the side and one on the top too. Taking a closer look at what you get in the box with the Nora, the first thing you will see that there is no GPS. This kit is just for the autopilot. You get the CAN bus power module. You get the I2C stroke CAN extension board, a couple of RC connectors, and you also get a UART Wi-Fi adapter as well. They have included a couple of sticky pads for mounting the autopilot, a USB-C connector for uploading the firmware, as well as a quick guide as well. But there is no GPS module in this kit. Kit. Now, as I've mentioned, they do include this Wi-Fi UART adapter as well, and this is one of the most handy little accessories you can get. It allows you to update prams on the ground and everything without plugging in your USB connector. Now, as I've mentioned, the Nora comes with an all-new CAN-based power module. It supports UAV CAN, and they call it the PMUSE. It works up to 60 volt, 80 amp, with an accuracy of 0.15 volt or 200 milliamp. Now, it's fitted with two XT60s, and it has this new new CAN based connector for communicating with the autopilot. Now you need to actually plug this into a specific CAN port on the autopilot itself and it is labeled power C. Now as you can see here I actually have it in the power A port. Now power A is your traditional power analog whereas it needs to actually go in the CAN port which is the one on the other side as I am showing you here so do make sure that you do get it in the right port or you won't actually get the module to work. Now this is an all new connector and it means that if you wanted to use an analog one you'd actually have to change the connector on it because as you can see it's the same connector on both the CAN and the analog port and it does 
doesn't actually plug in like it did on the old power modules. Now, as I've said, one of the benefits to the Nora is having these connections on one side. And for me, it's nice and easy to put it into something like this, which is my Bixler 2. We've got some pads mounted on the bottom, self-adhesive, and I'm simply going to mount it down into the frame like that with the other connections out the back. Now, as you can see here, I've actually cut a hole in the side of my fuselage, so I'm actually able to get to the USB port on the side of the frame when I'm actually using it. But there is some other options if you wanted to do it. You could simply just plug an extension on. Now, for me, I've been able to get everything into the back of the plane and then simply plug in the can into the port, then plug in a little extension cable for the XT60 that allows me to put the module at the back of the aircraft and then have that wired up towards the front. Now, installing firmware on this is fairly straightforward. I am using it with Mission Planner and Ardrapilot. Currently, I wasn't actually able to get it working with PX4. For Ardrapilot, it's simply plug in the USB cable into the side, go into your install firmware section and it will detect the correct firmware for the board straight off the bat without any problems. It will then do its usual installation process of erasing the board, programming the new firmware in, and once done, the autopilot will reboot and you will be able to connect to it just like you would expect with any other autopilot before. Now, just like some of the Cube models, you will see it shows two ports available, a CAN-based port and a standard COM port, and you would simply connect on the standard COM port. And because it's one of the H7s, it's nice and quick to connect. You're able to set all of the settings. As you can see here, we're taking a look at the onboard compass, which is on SPI, which is the RM310. As we're not using a GPS at this point, it isn't showing any of the other ones available, but you can then check anything else you want to check. If you go into the messages, you can simply check. It will tell you that everything is connected. It's a CUAV Nora and it is doing what you would expect it to do. Just to talk a little bit about GPS, as I mentioned, the Nora doesn't come with one in the box in the kit I got. That means you're going to have to purchase one separately. Now, it does support all of the usual GPS options you would expect. We have the GPS One port, which supports the UART for the GPS, I2C, as well as the safety switch. And if you wanted to use that, you could use something like the Neo 2 that I've got here on the V5 Plus from CUAV. Or you can use CAN bus. And if you're using CAN, you can use something Thing from CUAV, you can use the HERE 2, the HERE 3, or one of the MRO ones that are available. So there are lots of options, but it isn't included with the kit. Now, one of the interesting features on the Nora is this CAN based power module. And this one leaves me a bit on the fence because overall I've had no issues setting it up and it's worked absolutely fine, but I'm still trying to fully understand the benefits of having a CAN module will bring, especially in a system like this you're not having multiple sensors. Most of the autopilots already have power one and power two options, just like we've got on the V5 Plus, and they are dedicated ports that aren't used for anything else other than the power module. And whilst moving over to CAN can only be a good thing overall, there aren't really any benefits to doing it, like using GPS on Canvas or your compass on Canvas and moving away from I2C. However, it is good to see, and as I I've mentioned can brings a lot of benefits for sensors specifically and we're going to see more other equipment move to can like this power module and it is an interesting part of the kit. Now, overall, my thoughts on the Nora so far is that it appears to be very good. I've had no problems at all setting it up with Ardrapilot, although I couldn't get it to play ball with PX4. Um, the fact that it is that square rectangular design for me I quite like and it is handy that you don't have to have those connections on the top and that you have them on the sides and it just works out better for an application like this although you have got to take into account you've got the connections on either side and if it's in an aircraft that might be a bit difficult but you can use an external USB but I just ended up putting a hole in the side of it because I haven't got one of those cables with me now the overall pack for the Nora is quite nice but it is a shame that there isn't a GPS included 
included but as i've already said you can use it with pretty much any standard one on the market now a nice feature though is the fact that they do give you that cam based power module and it's going to be interesting to see how that all works out as well as giving you that wi-fi adapter for the uart and if you haven't used one of them before they are absolutely fantastic i have two or three of them and they are extremely handy to have on the bench for programming aircraft so you don't have to keep plugging in the usb port and i have as i said i think it's three or four of them and i put one on every aircraft that i build overall so far it all looks good and what i will do is in my next video is finish building it up and then get some air under the wings and show you guys what i think of it in the end now i would like to thank cuav for sending this over for me to have a look at as i've said already the nora is part of that x7 series of autopilots and there are a few others in that series as well there's the x7 pro which is that more modular design like you've got on the cube or the v5 plus and then you've got the nora which is this all-in-one design without the modular aspect but for me the Nora is ideal for this application. You still have that H7 CPU. You still have that triple redundant IMU sensors, all vibration isolated. So you don't have to worry about losing certain features compared to say the Pro model. This covers pretty much everything you need. Now that is it for this video. If you found it interesting, please do consider hitting that subscribe button. Don't forget I do a live stream on a Sunday night, 10 p.m. UK, 5 p.m. Eastern Time on my second channel. There is a link to that in the description of this video as well. As I've said, next we're going to get this finish built up, and then as soon as the weather gets good, we'll get some air under the wings and I will let you guys know what I think. Today's video is sponsored by us. If you find it interesting, please do check out some of our other content. Hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the little bell and select all. That way, you'll get updates on any new videos we release in the future. We also have a brand new dedicated live streaming channel. Sunday evenings, 10 p.m. UK time. I go live on this channel talking more drones and tech. It would be fantastic to see you on the stream. There's a link to that channel in the description of this video as well. Please head over there, hit the subscribe button and the bell as well, and I look forward to seeing you on the stream. Finally, if you'd like to support the channel, please do check out some of the links in the description of each video. These are affiliate links, but the income from these does allow us to keep buying products to be able to talk to you guys about on the channel in the future.